in the modern data landscape, it's typically the tools and technologies that grab all the headlines and it's what all of us are talking about. But an important decision you need to make, especially if you're leading a team or trying to decide what route you wanna go, is what strategy you're going to take. And by that, I mean, what's the high level approach you're going to take to move data from your sources into something that's useful for analytics and everything in between. And while there's a ton of different approaches that you can take to accomplish this, what I wanna talk about in today's video is what's referred to as just the stereotypical modern data warehouse approach and the end-to-end -end workflow of what that looks like, as well as some example tools to kind of drive home the point of how it looks. With the modern data warehouse, what you're gonna have again is your sources. And the big part here is that you have a batch loading process. So once an hour, once a day, whatever that cadence is, where you're extracting and loading all of those sources and putting it into what we're gonna call a data lake. The data lake is really just where you're dumping all of that raw unstructured data into a single location. But typically what you'll see here is this could be a maybe an S3 bucket or Azure blob, something like that, or it could just be a database. It doesn't really matter. It's more about the idea of landing things in a central location. But as we said, this data is unformatted. It's just straight from the source. There's nothing relating these together. So that's where you then run your data transformations. And this is where you're gonna see tools like DBT, Azure Data Factory, or just SQL scripts to transform this data and put it into something more formatted with the relationships and more data modeling structure within your data warehouse. And then from your data warehouse, you'll pull out different data models. The term model could be a table. And these models are customized for certain departments or certain reporting needs. And that's where this analytics section comes into play. And they will pull from these data models, which are from the data warehouse, which are clean versions of the data lake, which have been batch loaded from sources. Now, you might be thinking this sounds very similar to a traditional pipeline, and it is, but a big difference here is that this temporary landing zone gets cleared with every run. So every time you do your batch run, it's clearing this out and starting over for each run that you get. Whereas a modern data warehouse, you're just loading it and keeping it in the data lake. It's just a historical log. It's constantly growing. It's not getting cleared out. And the transformations pull from there as needed, whatever you need to do for that particular day or hour. And the reason that's important is because nowadays there's much more data being created and loaded. And generally speaking, storage is pretty cheap nowadays. It's not a huge cost to store that much data. Whereas in the past, storage might have been a little bit more of a concern. So clearing this out every day and not having that extra storage was more of a priority. And that's why this approach made more sense. So the term data lake is more about a concept and an approach more so than a specific technology. Some platforms and tools will use that term, but really it's the idea, as we mentioned, of storing everything in a central location. And we already covered a little bit on why that's okay nowadays with the modern stack. But what's important to remember is this is that central landing zone. And with that said, it can be accomplished a few different ways. And the two most common ways that I see are number one, through using a database and just allocating a separate schema or a separate database completely to store and load all of your raw data. And then you have a separate database for handling the data warehouses and maybe a third database for data models. And that's how you would set that up. And then alternatively, your data lake could be a cloud file storage or object storage like Amazon S3, Azure Blob, because maybe you have other types of uh, objects like video files or images that you can't directly store in your warehouse, but you still want to keep everything in one location. So maybe an object store makes more sense. So keep all that in mind when we when you hear the term data lake, it's more of a concept and there's different approaches for it. And now I want to jump into a few examples of potential tools that you could use to build out this modern data warehouse approach. Here's one example of what this could look like. And I also want to point out that I'm leaving out some of the other components like version control, orchestration, uh, containers, things like that, because that is stuff we're going to cover later. And I just want to stay focused on this core concept of the architecture. So let's say we have a few different data sources and business applications. One example tool to batch load could be Airbyte. And in this scenario, perhaps you're choosing to do your data lake, data warehouse and data models all within a Snowflake cloud database. So therefore all of your data is being loaded into some location in a Snowflake database. From there, you then use a tool like DBT to create custom SQL scripts and transformation code to then build and update new tables and views in another database that could represent your data warehouse. Then from there, you could have a third layer that could be a separate database, just another schema, just another separation of concepts to turn those warehouse models into more custom user-facing models. And again, you could use DBT to accomplish all that, and you would view them through something like Tableau. Let's look at another. Here is essentially the same concept, but this time, instead of going straight to Snowflake, perhaps you're using Amazon S3, as I mentioned, and then you would be able to use some built-in connector tools in Snowflake to copy that into the warehouse. There's connectors for that. 
and everything else remains the same. Here's a third example for a Microsoft hosted stack that doesn't include DBT. And I wanted to just switch it up a little bit just to show the point here. In this example, you might be using Azure Data Factory to connect to your sources, load them into perhaps a blob storage, and then you use Data Factory again to transform it into more SQL style database tables and whatnot. And then that all connects to Power BI. So my whole point with showing you these are not really to focus so much on the tools, but the concepts and the overall structure of this modern data warehouse, I think, again, this is probably the most common one and the simplest one to get started with. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what the modern data warehouse approach looks like in terms of an architecture and can start to think about how to implement it or learn more about it on your own. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.